What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you learn how to reach people online, build influence, and attract ideal clients. And we have a phenomenal guest with us today. We're talking about how 2020 has affected real estate and how it will affect real estate for the next five years. So we're talking all things trends. We're talking about what agents can and should be doing right now, whether you are a lifestyle agent doing a deal or two a month or whether you are a high-powered team leader, an indie broker. We're going to get into a lot of fun stuff here and just talk a pretty wide-ranging conversation conversation about what's going on in the industry right now and what's going to happen. So we'll get to, to our special guest in just a second. First of all, my junior grandmaster, the co-pilot, is in your seat where you so belong. It's a little, you know, it's it's a little bit backwards. We got the junior grandmasters here, Greg McDaniel, he's dressed up. There's actually um, what I would call product what gel, what uh, what Greg calls gel, um, which I, I assume was bought on, on some sort of pharmacy on the way back from a run today, just just to slap something up in there. Greg McDaniel, what's up today? God, you suck so hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I, I, I do have I have a product in my hair. I wanted to look presentable for Tammy. You know what? I, I had the honor of meeting her and doing an interview with her on Inman News with my dear good friend and the show's good friend, Bernice Ross. Uh, and it was just such a blast. And she's such a wealth of knowledge. She's the CEO and, and runs Exit Realty, a massive organization, tremendous group of folks. And I said, you know what? I got to get this chick on our show. She's just too smart not to be on Real Estate Uncensored. I mean, Matt, she's going to rival you on brain power. So prepare to lose, my friend. Prepare to lose. Well, it's Friday. It's Friday at 11 o'clock. So I, I feel like. Like there's a lot of people that can rival me in brain power right now. I think my brain is already on Sunday morning time. So uh, we also have the uh, the evil bald ninja here with us as well. What's up, man? What up, um, y'all? Yo, and by the way, it's 11 o'clock in some places. In other places, it's three hours closer to beer 30. Listen to me. Greg, you got some product a little bit like behind your ear here. Just clean, that up. <laughs> clean that up. Oh, and oh, that's where that went. Oh, thank God. I know we, we pledged we pledged to keep the show PG and already we're off the rails. So, what what better what it. better time to bring in our very special guest? Good Lord, Gene. Okay. Uh, Tammy, Tammy. now officially welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Hopefully, I can guarantee like you that's the most interesting introduction you've ever been. Given. <laughs> Definitely unique, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. So before we uh, before we dive into just the trends and kind of what's going on and what you're seeing with your leadership team and what you're seeing with your agents, uh, give people just a little bit of a snapshot of all the different roles and all the different uh, positions that you've occupied in your time in the business because you're, you're definitely a veteran that's done a lot of different things in the space. Not to bore you to tears, but I actually sold my first house when I was 13. I sold oh on site for I sold on site for builders until I was old enough to get m my real estate license. So I've been <laughs> in this business for a long time. But uh, for the last 30 years, I focused on the back room. I was instrumental in building three major brands before coming to exit. So uh, selling franchises, selling regions, helping those offices grow, teaching mergers and acquisitions, acquiring companies, uh, that kind of thing. But I did start off in the real estate space. Uh, I started in new construction and uh, worked my way through, but I've always been that strategy person that can see how something could be run just a little bit better. And so it's been really fun to help build something, and especially this, because I got to be with it from the start of when they came into the U.S. Yeah, love it. To, to love sell it, love a home it. at 13 years old, I mean, when people are now in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and they're getting into the business, and they stand, they're telling you that, it, well, you know, Tammy, it's I don't. I, I can't sell my first. I, I can't sell a house, or I can't get a client. What I mean? Wh what do you? I mean, obviously you're not negatively thinking about them, but I mean, what is what is your go-to? Like, well, I did it at 13 years old. I mean, this is just what you have to do. I mean, what do you tell someone like that? Because I. I <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I say, you're, you, do you have do you struggle, Tammy, to relate to somebody that says they can't sell their family and friends at the ripe age of like 25 when they get into business and you did it at the age of 13? Well, I think everybody had different exposure, right? I mean, to be fair, everybody had different exposure. I uh, am a daughter of Irish immigrants, so work ethic was a good thing, right? So I started a cleaning company at 11, um, and I used to clean new construction houses. That's actually how I ended up selling houses. The builder put his fist through the wall because the wall between the kitchen and the dining room wasn't supposed to be there and the realtor forgot to tell him. And so the second they left, I was sitting in a window scraping the window and I jumped through and I said, I think you just hit a stud and broke your hand. And um, so I ended up driving him to the hospital and I obviously wasn't old enough for my 
driver's license, but I lied. And so I drove him to the hospital on the way there and back. He complained about how confident I said, how hard is it? You got to paint a picture for somebody, show them what they, where they can be. He said, you think you can sell houses? I said, yes, I do. And he said, good, start Saturday, 500 bucks a house. And so that was my um, experience, but I understood about how the house was built and how to paint a picture. So, um, you know, I just ended up with a different opportunity, but I think that this business People complicate it too much. Uh, you know, we have conversations. I had conversations with people that weren't in real estate yesterday, and it's so funny because their picture is um, women with um, fake fingernails and 500 pounds of jewelry and, you know, this mm -hmm. idea, this mental picture in their mind and somebody that's selling, always selling. But I think the best salespeople I know, um, they're, they're a solution for whoever's in front of them, right? And mm. I tell everybody when they're fairly new, just remember, you're just having a conversation. I don't tell anybody I've broken world records and I don't tell anybody I'm going to sell anything. In fact, I don't even have that in my mindset. We're going to find out if our business philosophies match. I'm just going to have a conversation today. And that conversation, mm. if I add value, is going to lead to another conversation. If I add value, it's going to lead to another conversation. And so getting good at asking the right effective questions and not shooting yourself in the foot from the start of I have to sell something, but that I'm just going to go have a conversation. And if we do have enough conversations and add enough value, uh, we're going to fall into selling something, right? Yeah, 100%. I absolutely love that. That's probably one of the most powerful things I think has ever been said on the show and it, because it's so real and so raw. Uh, you know, just take us selling out of it. And just have a conversation. Just figure out if you're a right fit together. You know, if, like you said, your business philosophies are going to go into a line. I mean, you know, Matt and I joke around all the time, but our business philosophies align quite well because we like to joke, we like to laugh, we like to have fun, and we like to help people, right? And, you know, Gene is the same way. That's why we work out so well. And it's based upon, based upon because Matt and I were literally, you know, he was my coach at Viral Marketing before and he and i just had conversations every friday i didn't know that was weird but it was weird because not everyone showed up like every friday to shoot videos and we just laughed and joked we became friends became business partners and that's that's the basis of anything in life you know personal romantic business just have a conversation meet okay. the other person show up as your authentic self and say you know what how are you this is who i am do we can we be friends and it, it's a, it, it amazes me matt don't make any comments um, you know, <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's amazing. Y your work ethic is astounding. I mean, you started a cleaning business, business at 11, started selling homes at 13. I mean, what were you doing at 10? Slacking off? I mean, go on. <laughs> I was, I was a slacker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, I'm one of my parents had uh, six kids by the time they were 25. So, um, obviously work ethic was going to be a, a part of it with the way I grew up. I'm very lucky. I, I was very fortunate to be around people that had a pretty good work ethic. And I've always been fascinated by business. Uh, I used to mm -hmm. beg my father to take me, please take me to the planning board meeting. And I used to watch the way he talked to people and the way that he connected with people. And um, I just, I was addicted to hmm. all things business from a, from a really early age and lucky I was curious enough and uh, my dad was willing to take me. So it was really cool. And he made it and lost it several times. So that taught me a lot too, right? Oh, wow. uh, on whether to take risks or not take risks. And, you know, so sometimes we had breakfast for dinner and sometimes we had steak that was a couple inches thick, right? And, uh, <laughs> but it definitely taught me to be probably a little bit better with money than he was, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you said something really uh, that, you know, it's even the business philosophies match of, People want authenticity so bad, and so you really have to. I, I actually believe in it enough. I have a tattoo on my back that says, be true to yourself, and you'll be able to lead others. Thankfully, it's written in Japanese so that it's not covering my entire back. But um, <laughs> and, and I ended up with it because I lost a bet, but that's a story for a different day. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the um, being true to yourself and being able to feel – that someone else's business philosophies match if you were selling a franchise or recruiting an agent or recruiting somebody to be part of your team. And it's the same is true for um, selling real estate. It's okay to be really true to whoever you are. If you're really good with numbers, maybe it's a good idea for you to work with investors, right? Um, or if you're really good with numbers and you can just be truthful with people up front, look, I'm not gonna be overly personal, but this is what I can do for you. Um, and the more I think that you are authentic to yourself, the more successful you're gonna be. 
the people that work at my uh, corporate headquarters that we have in the U.S., I tell them because I'm a very high D personality and I just want to get stuff done. I tell them, look, if I run in here with one giant run on sentence on Monday morning and say, I want to do this, 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 and this, it's okay to stop me and go, hey, I'm fine, Tim. The kids are great. We had an awesome weekend, right? <laughs> it's okay to stop me and interrupt because that's who I am. And that way they understand and they're not offended by it. They know that that's just me on drive, right? Um, I think that more of us, if we were just more more authentic, everybody would be happier too. Hopefully this pandemic has given people an opportunity to think about what it is that they really want out of this life, right? It's a, it was a non-infinite life, infinite life, as a good friend of mine, Jake Wolf, always says. And, you know, you never know when your last day is going to be, and why not be the happiest you possibly can be, work at the brokerage that makes you the happiest. Um, I, I want to dive into a little bit of a question here. With what you just said, you know, with kind of the pandemic, everyone being happy and those whole nine yards, what are you seeing? Because you're, you're at a much higher level than most of us. You're, you're at a, an executive level, the highest seat in the entire corporation. What are you seeing from your perch up there in regards to kind of what agents are doing, what other brokerages are doing? How are people interacting or reacting to this? And where is this going to be in five years? Are we going to be sitting behind video screens? Are we going to be back at open houses? Are we going to see a blend of this? Kind of what, what's your viewpoint on this? Because I'm, I'm fascinated to hear this because so many people are asking that question. Right. Well, I actually think there's going to be a blend, and I'm going to tell you a couple of reasons why, uh, mm -hmm. even justifying your own income. <laughs> um, <laughs> because the consumer has witnessed that, you know, we everybody was able to rally and put in uh, virtual closing and virtual open house in, in 48 hours, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody rallied and rose to this occasion that they didn't rise to before because they were forced. Mm -hmm. But that also made the consumer sit up and go, well, what are they doing for what it is that they're getting paid, right? And so to me, there's going to be a couple of things that are going to be necessary for people to succeed. And I'm going to give you a couple pictures if you don't mind. Mm. One, that 30,000-foot view, right, that whole big picture all the way across. Um, there are agents that do not embrace technology will not survive. Brokerages that do not mm. embrace technology will not survive. But it's going to be the people that are skilled in real estate and skilled in relationships that use technology to enhance their business that are going to excel. It's not going to be the technology that's going to do it for you. You can't put a square peg into a round hole. It's going to be that you really understand, you know where the trends are, you have the 30,000 foot view, you have the 2,000 foot view, you have the street level view, but more important than anything, you have a perspective on whoever your client is so that you're really making a difference. You're the solution for that person in front of you you, that you can find out what their real estate dreams are, where do they see themselves in the what next one, three, five years. If they could wave a magic wand, what would that perfect picture be? And that you are the person that's going to be able to come back to them and say, here's what I'm seeing, and here's where I see windows of opportunity for you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I gave an example when we were talking with Bernice of, you know, I speak a couple hundred times a year, and I went out, and um, I had this young man that came up that he was fourth going in for a listing appointment. And he said, what am I going to, what do I do and how do I stand up against these people that have been in this business so long? And I said, Google the person that you're going after, friend them on Facebook, connect with them on LinkedIn, do as much as you can to do as much homework on that human being as you possibly can. He found out that the, the gentleman was in his 70s, he's owned his own business. I said, ask him where he sees himself in the next one, three, five years. Ask him when he plans on retiring. Investing in Opportunities Act was just out at that time. Ask him if he's aware of Investing in Opportunities Act, if he's planning on selling his uh, business so that he can uh, avoid some capital gains and get some return on what it is he's doing. Find out where he wants to retire if he's, the game plan is to retire. So he found out all of that information and found out that he did want to have list his property, but he wanted to know when the most advantageous time was because his property was paid off in full. He didn't need to sell it. And, and he was going to move two states away to go to retire. And he said, look, properties are going up in that area. I would buy your property where you want to retire, but hold on to this and I'll keep you apprised of as the values going up and up and up. I'll keep you apprised of what's going on. Um, hold on to this property while it's still going up so you can maximize your return. He taught him short-term rentals. In two years' time, he paid off his vacation uh, his vacation slash retirement home. He bought five investment properties, and he sold his house for $150,000 more than he would have if he just went in and was an automotron coming in on with just doing 
I'm going, bringing in a CMA and I'm doing a listing appointment. He asked the right mm -hmm. effective questions. He ended up doing seven transactions with him, right? Mm -hmm. But that guy's net worth ended up being $2.4 million more than it was when he met him. Wow. So to me, there are solutions like that that are everywhere, right? Um, so that's number one. I think that you need to be the solution. So you need to have relationship skills. You need to have real estate skills. And you need to know where those trends are, have that picture of all of those views. Um, but you do have to embrace technology because the consumer also wants speed and transparency. Uh, but we're using it as a tool. It is not going to take over this business. It's not certainly can't take away the expertise that I have of decades of being in this business. That is crazy, right? That competing against that, you want to use that wisdom. They're sitting out there saying, how does this impact me? They have the access to data too, but they don't know how it impacts them. It could be a first time home buyer that's a water heater away from not being able to pay their mortgage payment, or it could be somebody that wants to jump into investing and jump in the investment space. It could be somebody that's financially struggling right now and doesn't know how they're going to be able to pay their mortgage and you can navigate them through the process of a short sale and let them walk away with a little bit of grace and dignity, right? Um, I think that finding a lane, we're going to see more people have specialties. There's no doubt about that. 79% of the brokerages across the country are six agents or less. And a lot of those are going to end up merging into other companies. They are, did, they did you do say not, 79%? 79% of brokerages across the country have six agents or less. Wow. So all those mom and pops, because they haven't really leveraged technology, they're not going to be able to embrace it, plus they're getting older. So we're going to see a tremendous amount. Every other franchise we're selling, we're acquiring a company. And not all of them are six people. Some of them are 25, 30, 50, 100, um, because there's a lot of people that are getting a little bit older and they don't want to go through this next phase. They don't want to go through that next learning curve. Uh, maybe this is the last event they want to be part of. So um, I definitely think we'll see a tremendous amount of mergers and acquisitions, and we'll see some of them close. We'll see some people retire. Um, we're going to see huge changes commercially. Um, you know, we're going to see a lot of mixed use. We're going to see whether uh, Amazon buys up a lot of Simon shopping malls and turns them into uh, supply centers, or if we end up with uh, 55 and older projects that are going to go into a shopping mall. We're going to see a lot of mixed use in commercial properties that we're going to see residential along with uh, people in individual office spaces. We're going to see a lot of zoning changes. Um, and those zoning changes are going to be unbelievable. Um, if I was out there, I always recommend to everybody that they have a dirty dozen, a dozen people that work on the business, not in it, right? Mm -hmm. Appraisers, home inspectors, insurance companies. So I know every facet around business. We're looking at a lot of disaster that's out there, right? Um, in fact, in our lifetime, it won't won't be today and it won't be next year, but in our lifetime of all you guys on the line, and I'm older than all of you, in our lifetime, we will see um, climate change foreclosures. Without question, really? we'll, see, we'll see climate change foreclosures. What does that, what does that mean? Have, what is a climate change foreclosure? We're going to see, it'll be foreclosures because of climate change. We're going to see everybody wants to go live down by the water. Um, I live at sea level, so how far can you go? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Boston's at sea level and the sea is rising. So what happens when that happens? Mm, what yeah, happens when we have more and more sto storms? New Orleans is below sea level. Uh, areas in California are below sea level. So we're going to see people move more inland. Um, because of the benefit of technology and being able to talk like we are now, um, luxury, they're going to go to lower tax-based um, areas because they can save the money and they can, they, they can commute by plane or they can commute by Zoom. It doesn't matter to them. Right. So we're going to see um, them move. Everybody's going to move because of the circumstances they always have. But we're going to see a lot of things uh, that we're going to have to have the knowledge for disasters. If I was putting together a dirty dozen right now, I would make sure that I had somebody that was tied to mortgages so that I knew every time any type of financing change changes were going to happen. I would make sure that I had somebody tied to the planning board or municipalities so that I could see if there was a change going on in that community. I would make sure even migration charts are going to be dramatically different because, I mean, I'm seeing a ton of people move to Costa Rica, right? Um, mm -hmm. We're going to see um, a lot of people move for quality of life. Um, you know, thankfully for an awful lot of baby boomers on the line, your McMansion might be saved. <laughs> the millennials <laughs> might be moving out to buy your McMansion in the suburbs now instead of moving in towards the city um, because they want more room and they want to have some quality of life, right? 
Uh, mm -hmm. But I think it's really opened people's eyes to what they're thinking about and what it is that they want. Um, if I was listing and selling real estate today, I would make sure that I had that dirty dozen and at least one was tied to a municipality. So I knew of any changes that were going on in my marketplace. I would make sure that I um, had somebody tied to a moving company and more accurately, probably a moving company that mo is moving businesses because um, we're going to see a lot of companies that are going to move to different areas or that are going to uh, downsize out of where they are. And so the migration charts that we see on Forbes.com and that kind of thing, it's not going to be as accurate because of the fact that people are moving because of their circumstances and changing so and changing so rapidly. Um, add to the pandemic um, pesky little things like fires and hurricanes and tornadoes. <laughs> Tiny little and, things. <laughs> yeah. Pesky little details. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna see an awful lot of that, those things. And when you can come to whatever whoever the consumer is, whether you're specializing or not, and you can be the solution, and that you have all the accurate knowledge everywhere, uh, how many people do you need like that that are gonna be shouting from the rooftops for you? Um, how many people do you really need like that? It's not gonna be just the hunting down and getting a lead from uh, you know just doing my uh, doing internet marketing. Uh, if you really want to command a presence and you really want to gain respect in this business and you really want to get a return on your invested time, uh, you're going to need to be the solution. Can I jump that... in and ask a question? No. Please. <laughs> okay. Pretty please, Gregors. Okay, Bob Ninja. <laughs> so look, I, she, you said some really, really interesting and cool stuff there, but cool not in a way where it's got my head going. I, some of it makes me nervous, and I'm curious. So one of the things I've been seeing recently, and I and obviously being in Boston, I don't really know how hard Boston was hit by some of these protests um, and how businesses were hurt and how many were closing, but I, I'm curious as to the, the cycle of life and how you see this playing out over the next five years. And what I mean by that is my feeling is that, that, that a lot of these big cities are going to suffer for a little while because businesses have moved out. I think people that – don't want to be in the middle of that are going to migrate, like you said, to the suburbs. But I, I, but nobody's going to want to move back into the city if if all the old businesses are now boarded up and the buildings are dilapidated. And I see, I foresee a big problem in these big cities for for five, eight, ten years moving forward. And I'm curious, as with everything you just said, do you have any thoughts slash predictions slash th uh, fears about? some of these inner cities, and, and really anything outside of that. Like, if I live in the suburbs, am I going to be, am I going to have to expect that there's going to be an influx of people from the city and now my area gets denser? Like, any thoughts on that stuff? <laughs> That's a lot to ask. I know, <laughs> yes, I know. I, yes, I actually, I, I, I do have thoughts on that stuff. Um, you know, <laughs> we... First of all, we've made it through how many how many recessions have we made it through, and we've made it through the depression, and we've made it through wars, and we've made it through um, all of these other things that have been around us. We made it through 9/11, and nobody knew, and everybody was full of fear. Um, first of all, fear is a feeling, not a fact. And so, if you can just keep yourself in the current tense, you're in in control of yourself being as present as you possibly can, you can definitely alleviate some of that fear. Mindset has so much to do with it. But there's going to be creative people that are going to come in. Uh, not today. Some of these cities actually needed to get a slight, you know, a stinging slap to the side of the head um, so that they would wake up because they got to the point of ridiculousness. I mean, how can you afford to have a, a place in Boston and in uh, San Francisco that's, you know, uh, $3,500 for a postage stamp a month? Right. right. Um, so they had to get more real, realistic. And so I think that there are going to be some more realistic things. But people are unbelievably creative. This is when mo the most creative times in our life happen is when we're faced with something that's extreme. Look how fast uh, the real estate industry rallied and was able to do a virtual open house in two days and was able to do a virtual closing in two days when um, half of them were doing everything by hand before that. Right. Um, we're going to see some really creative things that are going to end up happening. We're going to see some unique ways that are probably going to be affordable housing for that next generation that will happen in some of the cities. And then we're going to see people that are going to uh, rebuild with unique businesses that we haven't even seen yet. Um, you know, think about where we were when before all the things that are invented now. Look at how fast 
technology has started to give us data. Look at how fast technology has shifted absolutely everything. You know, you guys probably none of you ever had a real estate book. <laughs> but my, my, the, dad, my you know, dad did. The real my estate book, did. the listings and these page after page, and I have all the information. I remember being at Inman and having people screaming, freaking out that technology wouldn't be allowed in our business because it was going to take over our business. And it doesn't <laughs> take over your business. Somebody just started to occupy your brain in the wrong way. Um, you've got to stay steadily focused on how much you can grow and how much you can grow as a, grow as an individual and how much you can grow business wise. But I see there are going to be a lot of changes in the in the cities, and I actually think a lot of it is going to be all of a sudden we're going to see the um, younger people because of, of it becoming affordable because a lot of these properties are going to sell for a song that are in the cities um, in businesses. They're going to turn things into stuff that we never even dreamt of that we honestly, it's not even on our, our radar right now. And they're going to focus on uh, incredible opportunities for things that we just we just can't even see. So I'm not concerned with that. I am concerned with the fact that some cities and towns have not really planned forward for, um, you know, our corporate headquarters is in Toronto, and to see that people have to move two hours out in a commute for in order to be able to afford even though they live, they work there, that they have to drive two hours each way. Well, now we're finding a solution for that, right? We're, they're going to be um, satelliting from home probably three days a week. Now, I don't mind the two-hour drive because I'm only doing it twice a week, right? right. Um, and, and on We're going to see so much creativity during this time of things that are going to be invented and businesses that are going to be started that we – and some of it is kind of actually turning into a little bit of old school – Communities are becoming communities again. People are becoming neighbors again. Uh, we're, we're becoming more humanized. And so I think it's going to be a pretty cool mix between uh, technology and being human. Um, you can't tell me that um, a virtual hug or virtual sex is the same. <laughs> yeah, as, as evidenced by Demolition Man, just go back and watch that movie. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> All right, there was something that you said really early on that I didn't get a chance to jump on that I want to come back to, which is you mentioned that you see the potential for people to really specialize, both individual agents, but also maybe even brokerages and companies. So uh, I want to go down that rabbit hole a little bit. What are some, some of the opportunities for the average agent? What are some of the opportunities that they have to specialize? And maybe what are some of the, some of the opportunities that companies as a whole could specialize? Okay, so let's, um, let's start with the individual, but let's look at the kind of that 30,000 foot view too of what it is that people are looking for so that you can find that opportunity and then you have to understand yourself right investment business goes on all the time there will always be investors so if you're really good with numbers and you're really good with math how cool is it when the average investor is buying 15 properties a year it's not a bad thing to represent right but you better know your stuff and you better know what that return on investment is and you better understand um, exactly what the information is that you're delivering to those people. And once you do, they'll be loyal to a fault. Um, but that's good for somebody that's really good with math. If you're an I personality and you're off the chart with personality and you're not really good with numbers, right? My description of an I, I was going to conquer the world, but then I saw something shiny. Um, those, people, <laughs> right? those people are not going to be doing um, – they're not going to be they're absolutely not going to be good for investment business that's not going to be their lane but they can definitely build relationships and pick a lane of what it is that they see um, that could be an could be an opportunity new construction is still lagging behind hugely um, and there's going to be so many windows of opportunity to even work both with the developer and get the whole entire whether it's a, a subdivision um, seeing we're going to see everything from uh, 55 and older to a whole bunch of millennials that, that are entrepreneurs that are going to have a satellite in the middle that they're going to all work out of. We're going to see people doing it with organic things. We're going to see so many changes in that direction that um, there are a ton of windows of opportunity. Uh, there are opportunities all the way down to I'm only going to work with people that served in the military, right? I mean, you can you can really pick a lane, but if you pick a lane, become the expert that everybody knows that's what's going to happen. But just for a big picture for you, the 30,000 foot view, for decade after decade after decade, um, you know, for a while we saw our international business and that was really on a hot streak, not so much on a hot streak, especially with what's going on in our world right now um, yeah. and, our, and our government, pesky little details. Um, <laughs> but 
So, the, but the 30,000 foot view construction is going to be around for at least another decade. We're going to still have this lag for new construction. So that's a great window of opportunity. Um, mm. it, investor business will, is around all the time. I mean, it varies anywhere from 20 to 45% of the business, but it's around all the time. So that will be always ongoing. Um, senior business. It depends on where you are, but senior business is huge. And for people that are those people people and that are really empathy oriented, um, you know, people don't talk to their folks about what they want to do with their lives. We were all raised not to talk about money. And um, so most of the time you witness them that the whole family falls apart after the parents pass away or they end up in an assisted living facility or something else going on instead of having a conversation now, a crucial conversation now and serving them. So uh, there's a great book that was written by Chris Sheffield called The Parent Care Solution. Um, and it's a great opportunity to people for people to go have conversations. That's a huge amount of the uh, of wealth that's going to go from this generation of people that are seniors. Um, and you know, here's the deal: if I do something really good for your mom, what do you want to do for me? Whatever I want. <laughs> yeah. The opportunity when you do the right thing for that person and literally help them, even if they say, look, I want to stay in place here. I, I might have to make it wheelchair accessible or we might have to make it so that the bedroom's in the downstairs, but I want to stay here. This is my home. Being able to do that and provide for a family that they can connect together and have that level of closure, they're going to refer you everybody they know because you mm -hmm. did the right thing and you made the right decision. So I see those as definitely the 30-year time frame over the next five years, which is what we started to talk about in the beginning. I see a huge amount of uh, commercial property that's going to turn into crazy mixed use. Um, crazy that everybody's going to be doing all sorts of subletting, that we're going to see shopping malls turned into uh, 55 and older projects, so we're going to see them turn into all sorts hmm. of crazy condo projects. We're going to see them be Amazon fulfillment centers, um, but we're going to see some unique things that people really didn't think of before. Um, and if you can be ahead of that curve and really see when that opportunity comes in, uh, you're going to excel. As far as companies go, you know, a lot of the boutique places um, that if you're around the water or you're around vacation areas or that kind of stuff, those kind of boutique things could be um, really unique. But you can position yourself depending on where you are. You know, if you put an office around uh, where all the bases are, you could specialize in people that served in the military, right? Mm -hmm. um, and build a relationship and make sure that it's ongoing and understand and learn everything that has to do with that. You can be, um, you know, a condo king or queen, uh, but really so much of it has to do with making sure that you pay attention to um, the 30,000 foot view of where those opportunities are. And I'll give you an example. We, we have a lot of uh, news media out there in real estate that you have to pay to play, right? Mm -hmm. So is that real news? Do we have that's news on television that's leaned either blue or red? Mm -hmm. yes. Right? And so we and we also have it in real estate that there are some places that you've got to pay to play. So you really need to search more than just that. You know, if I'm representing luxury, my 30,000 foot view, I want to make sure that I'm uh, an avid reader of the Wall Street Journal because there are always going to be people with money and there are always going to be people without and there are always going to be uh, those opportunities. But if I can stay ahead of those trends so that I can come in and share something with you, I think a lot of people would own more real estate if they knew how simple it was. I think a lot of people would do more with it so that you could um, do more business with less people if you stopped and spent enough time to educate them on what the opportunities are for them. Gosh, you know, I'm... Tammy, literally every time I have an opportunity to talk with you, I mean, there is a reason why you hold the seat that you hold. You are a wealth of knowledge, and, I, and I'm not kidding about this. You're, you're, you're very refreshing to listen to because what, what we typically hear is doom and gloom and everything is horrible and everything else. And you're like, no, bro, like, you have, there's so much opportunity out there. You just got to look, look at it through a different lens. And, and if you see me looking down, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm actually taking notes because I see, I think a lot of this stuff is incredibly powerful. I mean, one of the things that you said that really kind of hit home with me is that you're occupying your brain in the wrong way. I think a lot of people occupy their brain in the wrong way. They look at it through a dirty filter. Therefore, everything they see is dirty. And we haven't had the, we haven't we haven't had a leader like you to step in and be like, no guys, hey, I got your back. This is what you got to do. And you gave practical, realistic, tangible actions that you can do. If you work luxury, go read the Wall Street Journal. You know what? Go have a conversation with someone. These are so practical. But I mean, I, I'm sitting there going like, 
well, what the heck, man? I mean, I should be reading the Wall Street Journal. But then I remembered I'm dyslexic. And Matt, I don't want any cracks. <laughs> but you know what? So much of everything we do, it doesn't matter what business you're in. I don't care what business you're in. Um, so much of what we do has to do with where our headspace is, right? Mm. Uh, I'm a martial artist, so I believe very strongly in the mind-body connection anyway. Um, but you have the ability to be in control by just doing a couple of things that keep you in control so that you're starting off your day in control. Most people, unfortunately, and technology, that has been a downhill for, road for technology. People go into their, uh, bring their phone into bed, right? It's the last thing they see before they go to sleep, and it's the first thing they see when they wake up. It's their alarm clock. You know what? I don't. My phone is not in my bedroom, and I'm responsible for thousands of people. My phone is not in my bedroom because that's I, I don't talk on my phone in my bedroom. I have a Batman alarm clock, and my Batman <laughs> alarm clock literally puts the bat signal up on the ceiling, and then I know it's time to go save Gotham. I bet I wake up. I bet I wake up in a much better frame of mind, right? Because yeah. I'm going to go save the day. And so when you start off your day in control, even if that's as simple as literally just taking two minutes and closing your eyes and visualizing how you want the day to go, if you just did that, you'd find that after a couple weeks practice of doing it, that the day would start going the way you envisioned it. Mm. Well, and it's just starting, start with start. You know, what what martial art, by the way? Taekwondo. Nice. Oh, by the way, uh, Jean, ask her what belt she is. <laughs> I guess is it a black? You got to be a black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that. That was a setup. A couple of, a couple of degrees down, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. uh, you know, so I have a friend of mine. though. Everyone in my household, everyone in my family is a, a registered lethal weapon. Everybody's a second degree black belt or above. A registered <laughs> lethal weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong house to break into. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, I have a friend of mine. When it comes to like waking up and being inten uh, intentional in your day, my friend Jake. Um, going over this great company called Clever Leads that I'm using, and it's just blowing doors when it comes to technology and leveraging stuff, right? But yeah. he gets up and he cracks me up because he's ex military. He gets up and he roars. He goes, Roar! And, I, and I'm like, Why do you do that? And he's like, I'm letting the world know I'm here. And I'm like, <laughs> Okay, okay, <laughs> that works. Uh, but but it's, it, I think what you're saying, you know, Tammy is so profound, but so, again, so simplistic, but we all lose sight of all this stuff. And you kick the damn phone out of your bedroom you know you don't need to be scrolling facebook at 10 o'clock at night leave it charging somewhere else by the way it's healthier with all the g5 stuff anyways we're not getting that again a story for another day but um in, in regards to get some quality time with your, your significant other your husband your wife whatever else or just go to bed in the dark by yourself who cares then get up with intention and visualize visualization i've been doing a lot of energy work and kind of visualization and stuff like that and i thought it was all hocus pocus weird stuff it is not it has legitimately changed my life in the last probably four to five weeks. And it's purely by being intentional, I wake up. I wake up and I go through a, a kind of a, a, a set routine, uh, doing some energy stuff and you know meditation and, and visualization. And it's incredible when you really get intent, have intent behind what your actions are. Then one, you're gonna take action more because you know where you're going. You're not like a boat without a rudder, just kind of putt-putting around through the, through, through the harbor. You, you're, going for, you're going like a speedboat, you're going like a missile. And second off, you feel fulfillment. Like yesterday, I had a goal to achieve certain actions, right? And most people say, well, I got to work, you know, 50 hours a day, and then I'm going to call it quits and wake up and work 60 hours the next day, and then I'm successful. You know what? I recruited two people into my company, and I got a, and I went on a listing, and I, I had a listing appointment. You know what? I'm good. I achieved my day goals, and then, then guess what? I was going to go swimming, and then they shut it down, but then I went and sat on the couch. <laughs> but I achieved my intention. Right, right. Matt? Deliberate intent okay. is so important. It's so important. Yep, watching. Craig, show me your show me your own face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, God. But you know, it's and and I think another thing is that other, other, other people the, the the mainstream media either red or blue, whatever your your preference is, right? Their job is to instill fear into your life because that's what that's what sells magazines that's what sells newspapers right that's what sells advertising dollars and i love your quote fear is not fear is a feeling not a fact and i love that so much because we are running around all scared out of our wits is joe biden gonna win is trump gonna stay in office oh my god the world's gonna crash and burn right what if you stop being every fearful, major election we go through the same 
stuff. Yeah. And then yep. two days after election, everybody says, well, that's the art president. Let's get back to work. Yep. And <laughs> Exactly. And stop being it's fearful of what's going to take place. Look, if Trump stays in or if Biden takes office, look, you're still a real estate agent. You're still going to help that family. You're going to help that young couple. You're still going to help that investor. You're still going to do your damn job. So just put your nose to the grindstone. You know, Gary Vee, when he started his, his, his podcast and everything else, took him 18 months. To, to, to get any traction. You know, Matt and I started our, this podcast, took us, I think we adopted that model of 18 months. We just put our nose to the grindstone. We didn't look up. We didn't see what other podcasts were doing. We didn't care about whatever was happening. Matt and I just had to figure out how the hell to do this damn thing called podcasting and get people to listen to our two monkey butts. And you know what? It worked out pretty well. We got a rock star, Tammy, on the show today. That's very funny. And it's just you know because we did is, our job. Yeah, but the thing is that you just said something so accurate, and it's literally, I, I tell people when they start with us, just put your head down and don't look up until you, you get this, this, and this done, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if you just stay solely focused on what it is that you're supposed to get done, everyone should remember, it doesn't matter what company we work for, what brand, what, what we have on us, we're all going to attract our own tribe, and hopefully mm -hmm. we're smart enough to do that so that we're really happy with the culture that's in uh, the office that we're in or the, the, the company that we're with. But you have to remember, this is your business. In, in this business, it doesn't matter whether you're working with a brand or you're working on your own, you are your brand. And so mm -hmm. this is your business. So your business is in your windshield. And if you could have that picture in your mind, your business is in your windshield, and I'm driving and this is where I'm going to go. And the competition is in my rearview mirror. And I don't mean that derogatorily. I mean it that I need to look up every once in a while and look in my rearview mirror so I don't blindside a, a motorcycle or a tractor trailer that's heading into my lane. I need to pay attention to what's out there so that I know what everybody is doing so I have a healthy level of awareness. But I need to have more of a, an awareness of what it is I'm doing every single day. Don't worry about what the competition's doing. Worry about what you're doing. What am I doing and what am I taking control of in my day? Love that. I'm writing, I'm writing that quote down. Your business is in your, in your windshield. Your competition is in your rearview mirror. Because you, you, if Bob from Remax is, is taking some listings, that's fine. That Bob did a good job. We don't know what his life path was, right? And we don't know where, you know, the only thing we can control is our, our the, the thing the Navy SEALs call it a three-foot rule. You can only affect with the, what's within three feet of you. So keep that in mind. And you don't know what he did, You don't, but you can know what you can do. And uh, people, like I had a conversation with a really awesome dude. He's actually, Gene, I need to connect you with him. He's a cop in Philly, super cool dude. Um, and uh, he was like, well, how do I get listings? How do I get buyers? I'm like, bro, that's the easy part. We can teach you that. Don't worry about that. We'll bring it into you. We'll just, let's just get you going. And so many people stop because they're like, I don't know how to do something. You know what? But there's, only three, there's only three ways you can fail. Not enough knowledge, and that's mm -hmm. not enough knowledge on where trends are going to happen, what's happening on a street level that, that's local to where you are, a statewide level or a province, depending on where you live. Mm -hmm. um, what's, what, what it is that you have for knowledge about yourself, what it is you're good at, because we're only good at a couple of things, right? And the knowledge you have on the consumer. So um, accurate knowledge, you can fail if you don't have accurate knowledge in those directions. Uh, second is negative habit patterns, right? Having old junk in your head, or mm -hmm. maybe you run out and you go after something before doing enough homework, or you're on the opposite side, you're inhibited, and so you're afraid to go have that conversation. It's just a conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Know where your strengths are so that you don't stay in that negative habit pattern. But the biggest one, and it's because of uh, where we are, and it's not just COVID, it's technology and everything else, it's distractions. Um, People are allowed to, they allow themselves to get distracted and it doesn't matter whether that's the competition or I wake up and I have my cell phone in front of me and all of a sudden I'm on emails and then I'm on social media and then I go down that slippery slope and all of a sudden I'm on Amazon and where did the day go? Um, <laughs> they've got to be, decide that they're going to take control and these are the things I want to accomplish first before allowing those distractions to come into play. And now we have things like uh, COVID and we have the stuff that's coming on in the news, you're getting inundated with stuff all the time. You have to control what you allow to come in. And uh, too many people are just allowing, you know, somebody new comes in to do business. Oh my God, they're going to take over everything. Were you good at this before they showed up? <laughs> because if you were, chances are you're still going to be okay. Right. See, but see, that's the cool thing about that. I mean, it, it, that's where my mind, mind completely goes the other direction because when I see someone come into the business, I'll look at them. I'm like, okay, so you're, you're the new cat. All right, cool. What's you all about? And then just kind of watch what they're doing. 
take a little nugget of what they're doing, put it into your own business if you, if, you, if you think it's working out well. But you're right. If you were good before, you're going to be good when they're in the business. And you know what? You don't have to be enemies. You can be coworkers. You can, hey, you got a new luxury listing. I got a new luxury buyer. Let's put these bad boys together. Let's do a deal. Right. You know? That's exactly how things were supposed to be. But you know what? Else, competition is healthy. It's what gets you out of bed in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. What gets the what's what gets the best race out of somebody? The other runners. <laughs> oh. You know, that's how you that's how you find out what you're really good at, right? You're full of great one-liners. I'm just writing stuff down. <laughs> she, she is. There's been a couple of them. Those were some zingers, dude. What makes the best race of the other runners? I'm like, damn. I'm about looking at things through a different lens. But I mean, you're so right. And one of the things that I think that we're going back a little bit, and then we got to wrap this thing up here. But um, you said a way to look at, you know, your, how to be a proficient professional. Uh, and is to go out and talk to municipalities and look, talk to the planning departments and understand what's going on in the area. I mean, I've talked to the planning department a couple of times, and I'll openly admit that I have not done it that much. And I, every time I go down there and I talk to them and kind of see which way the, the, the city is shifting and moving and what their plans are, kind of what they're looking for, I mean, that, it was an awesome opportunity because it gave me, one, I got to meet the, the, the city you know, people, and two, I was, all, I was able to speak with knowledge, real knowledge, to the developers and builders and buyers and sellers and give them information that they can then disseminate down to their coworkers, their friends, their family, their spouse or whatever else with some little nugget of goodness because everyone likes to be the smart person in the room. Um, Matt tries to overdo me all the time, but it's okay. I, I still, I muddle along. It's okay, I take therapy and Xanax, but um, <laughs> you know, he's shaking his head for all you guys are listening. But, you know, I love doing that. And I think going down and talking to the planning department to see what they want is absolutely legitimate gold. I, I, I forgot about doing it, and thank you for reminding me. You know what? I found out uh, in the community I live in, and there's only about 9,000 people. I live outside of Boston, and I live in a place that's all um, 1890s farmhouses and, you know, apple orchards, that kind of thing. And cool. there are 9,000 people in probably 3,500 homes. And they had a rule and uh, just history for one quick second. This is an area where the farms, because it was so cold, um, the barns were attached to the homes. So they're really good sized homes. And they all had in-law apartments that people that worked on the farm lived in so that they could get up at five o'clock in the morning and take care of, you know, whether it was a, a dairy farm or whatever, that they could take care of. And it was so cold that they would be able to come back in, right? So um, as the farmers got older, the people that owned the property, they moved into the apartment and their kids moved into the house. That's kind of how the history of all of it happened. And um, somebody came into the planning board. I won't, I, I won't name names, but somebody came in that did not have a skill set. Let's just say that. And so they changed um, all the in-law apartments and anything with um, more than 800 square feet of an uh, ancillary apartment. And we're talking about properties that are six to 12,000 square feet. Um, anything over 800 square feet, it just became a two family and it lowered the value of the properties. And someone else came in and changed that rule. And when they changed that rule, it impacted out of 3,500 homes, about 550. And so I spoke to an office that's close by, and one agent took the ball and ran with it. And he door knocked all, of, all 550 of those homes, or 545, or whatever the number ended up being, um, and told them that the pro their property value just went up by between 150 and $300,000, depending on the property. And he got 48 listings in one week. Whoa. Holy mackerel. Good for him. So, but the point is, you got to take the ball and run with it, right? Go get the yeah. information and then bring it back. Is this, um, watch for opportunity. Because instead of being in a panic, the goal is that we're going to be watching for opportunity all the time. Watch for opportunities. There's windows mm -hmm. of opportunity everywhere. If, you were, if we were sitting here and we were chatting and it was 2007, I'd say, pay attention to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac because the stuff's going to hit the fan, right? <laughs> uh, there's, there's an opportunity all the time. You just have to be aware of it. And if you're aware of it and a little bit ahead of that curve, maybe it's a company that's moving into your community that you weren't aware of, but you're friends with the guy at the bank and now you know. And mm -hmm. Now I get to relocate a tremendous amount of people, um, you know, first in wins in a lot of circumstances, especially when you're paying attention to what it is you know how to do. We got to have you back. I mean, it's just, I mean, it, 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 there's just, we, I know we haven't even scratched the surface and there's so much good knowledge here. And I guess, look, if you just jumped into this or, or, or you weren't taking, you're on a run or you're working out or something like that, go back and listen to this again. I mean, there is some, really digest this conversation. 
Um, that's not a joke because there are some really good nuggets in here. Pretty much everything she, she, she's spitting is just rock solid knowledge. Why do you think she speaks several hundred times around the, around the country, guys? And she's the head of a massively large company uh, and runs it with obviously love, care, kindness, knowledge, and just giving. I mean, this is just some amazing, amazing stuff. So I feel, I feel full now. Thank you. I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys awesome. are a breeze to talk to. <laughs> good, good. Tammy, what's the best way to kind of stay in touch with you and, uh, you know, I, I guess kind of get into your world, but also just to think about Exit Realty and, and if they're deciding on making a move, you know, get more information about your guys' approach and, and see if they're a good fit. Well, ExitRealty.com obviously is a, a piece of cake, but if you want to reach me personally, um, you can text 85377 and just punch in T-A-M-I, that's my first name, hit send on your cell phone, that's my mobile business card, my face will pop up, and if you hit the black button, I'll go into your uh, contacts. I always return my calls, but give me 24 to 48 hours because I am running a company that's uh, that's definitely growing, but uh, <laughs> uh, I always return my phone calls, and um, awesome. you guys are a pleasure, honestly. Thank you. Okay. It's my, it's, we, we'll excuse Gene uh, from the beginning of the show, but besides that, we, we're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah because uh, gene's the problem uh speaking hey. of gene gene what's the uh what's the best way to reach out and connect with you uh you know that you know the drill folks gene get out to the website there's a little widget that pops up give me some information i'll get notified and we'll have a call sounds good great awesome. well, same question for you you guys, um, why don't you just hit me up on Facebook, shoot me a DM, um, and I would love to have a conversation with you. Um, if, you're, we're not, if we're not friends, I may, I got rid of some old friends who were just, they weren't, no more Facebook, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, they're not, they're not in my life anymore. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> they crossed the line. <laughs> no. Um, but just shoot me a DM. I'd be happy to come, have a conversation with you guys, or like I always do, shoot me a text on my cell phone. It is this thing. It's this thing that's all made of glass and cost twelve hundred dollars and we all pay for it uh it works i pay the bill sometimes matt has to help me on the other time other times he's benevolent self he's wonderful but uh 925 915 1978 again 925 915 1978 guys when you dial those it comes here like tammy we will return your calls so that's how we do it. Matt, now you have a little pamphlet you wrote up the other day. Now, how do they get a hold of this pamphlet? <laughs> this pamphlet. Uh, it's called Micro Famous. You can get the book at getmicrofamous.com. And one of the reasons I asked, uh, Tammy asked you about the specialization thing, it's something that I, I talk about a lot in the coaching consulting world with my friends and clients, but it applies just as much to agents. I don't know why you don't see more specialization. I, I, that's one of the reasons I mentioned that as I talk about that in the book, that people want specialized solutions for them. And uh, we're coming into an age where like, we, there's really some big opportunities for people to take advantage of that. So if anyone is curious about just how to go down that path and focus on being micro famous to a much more focused specific set of people that you actually want to work with that's what the book is about so with that being said greg shall we Peter. pick a color for the yes. bow that we shall wrap around this episode yeah i think we should Matt. that's a very good idea and by the way guys i was just busting matt's chops the book is absolutely fantastic uh, it is. I, I, I am reading it, and it is legitimately a good book to read. One hundred percent. Somebody, somebody got on me the other day because I haven't recorded the audio book for it yet, and I know yeah. that if I did that, you would actually read the whole thing. So I should. I would. I would. I, should. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Well, I'm, so I'm, I'm debating on putting it on my you wrote it. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> I'm a fan of the fact that you wrote it. I think that um, it is not. It took me. It took me a year. It took me exactly nine months longer than I thought it would take. But yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it, is, it is an undertaking. But um, all right. So I got to get started on the audio book. Um, oh let's do. Uh, this is a nice, bright, sunny, optimistic episode. Let's do. Uh, let's do yellow for the bow. I love yellow, Matt. I was going to pick yellow, but I'm glad we're sharing a brain again. So good job, buddy. <laughs> so guys, there it is. There's a, there's our yellow bow on this amazing show. Tammy is a legend, as you guys just heard. Please put a comment in iTunes or wherever you guys listen and watch the the, uh, the show. Mention her. Uh, go and contact her. Uh, I, I did reach out to her, and she did reach back. It's an honest, legit thing. She does use her phone. Um, Tammy, you're amazing. I truly appreciate you. I pr truly appreciate all the notes I got from you on this show. Uh, and we will have you back if you'll come back and hang out with us. Gene, I love your baldness, brother. You're awesome. Matt, you're a legend. All right, guys. Till next time. Peace out, ninjas. We gone.